Hello dear students today i'm starting with absorption in previous lectures we have studied about digestion of carbohydrates proteins and fats as food is digested it is then absorbed into the body by various processes so let's start today's topic about absorption first of all absorption absorption may be defined as the process by which diffusible nutrients are transferred from lumen of gut into blood or lymph by certain physiochemical processes and also by active transport in this lecture we will discuss all the processes in detail the site of absorption is small intestine however very little absorption also takes place in the stomach region in stomach small amount of water some salts alcohol and certain drugs such as aspirin are readily absorbed right but the main site of absorption is the small intestine so as i have told you that absorption mainly occurs in the small intestine that is why internal surface area of small intestine is greatly enlarged by its enormous length that is about 6.25 meters or approximately 20 feet right it also has folds folds are close set of longitudinal and transverse projections of mucosa into the lumen of intestine these folds are called as folds of karkring so here in this slide you can see two images first image is of small intestine this is the small intestine region this one is the lumen of the small intestine having circular folds right the second image is of human small intestine through endoscopy in this image folds of karkling these are the folds of karkling which can be seen projecting into the lumen of the intestine next one are the villi villi are numerous small finger like projections of mucosa villi are visible in all these images here you can see these are the finger like projections of mucosa which are called as villi each villus contains abundant blood capillaries arising from nearby artery and vein villi can twist and shorten to quicken absorption by causing circulation of blood and lymph in them and the movement of villi are accelerated by a hormone called as villikinin which is secreted by intestinal mucosa in response to the presence of food in the intestine and the last one are the microvilli microvilli are minute countless closely packed protrusions on free surface of the mucosal cell so here you can see a enlarged image having mucosal cell and comprising of microvilli which are present on the free surface of each individual cell and collectively they are called as the brush border this slide shows the absorptive adaptations in the small intestine enormously long sized small intestine having folds villi 
which are the finger like projections of the mucosa this one is the enlarged image of individual villi and this one is the mucosal cell having microvilli at the free end all these structures increase the surface area of small intestine and ensure maximum absorption now coming to the mechanisms of absorption absorption occurs by two processes first one is the passive absorption and second one is the active absorption passive absorption occurs down by concentration gradient that means it continues till the concentration on both sides equalizes it occurs by physical processes such as simple diffusion osmosis and facilitated diffusion in simple diffusion small nutrient molecules dissolved in water diffuse from lumen of intestine into the blood capillaries that means from region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration this process continues till the concentration is higher in the intestinal contents than in the blood but when the concentration difference disappears diffusion stops therefore no nutrients can be fully absorbed by the diffusion and moreover diffusion is a slow process in osmosis water is mainly absorbed the absorption of any solute raises the osmotic pressure of the blood thus equivalent amount of water is also absorbed this process occurs as long as the solute concentration is higher in the blood than in the intestinal contents in facilitated diffusion it involves the movement of molecules along the concentration gradient but with the help of carrier molecules therefore it is a rapid process as compared to simple diffusion as nutrient molecules are carried across the cell membrane by the carrier protein molecules and fructose and mannose are mainly absorbed by the process of facilitated diffusion in this slide first one is the osmosis which involves the water movement across the membrane water moves from region of lower solute concentration to the region of higher solute concentration but bulk of water is also diffused across the membrane through protein channels as well in the next image this is the difference between simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion in simple diffusion molecules move across the membrane along the concentration gradient but in facilitated diffusion molecules diffuse with the help of carrier protein in the membrane one is the active absorption in this process nutrient molecules are absorbed through intestinal mucosa against the concentration gradient active absorption is a rapid process and depends on energy provided by the atp therefore it is a atp dependent process and energy is provided by the hydrolysis of atp it is of two types first one is the active transport and second one is the endocytosis in active transport it is independent of concentration gradient thus nutrients are not only transferred down the concentration gradient but also against the concentration gradient it is brought by 
carrier molecules like that of facilitated diffusion and here carrier molecules are permeases or translocases present in the cell membrane. Energy for active transport is brought about by hydrolysis of ATP, glucose, galactose and amino acids are absorbed by active transport. Sodium ions are also important for this type of transport. This slide shows the difference in passive transport and active transport. In passive transport, this type of diffusion takes place along the concentration gradient that means from region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration whereas active transport takes place against the concentration gradient. In passive transport mainly in facilitated diffusion it takes place with the help of carrier molecules. Active transport also takes place with the help of carrier molecules but here hydrolysis of ATP takes place that is energy for the process is provided by the ATP. So let us take the example of active absorption of glucose. The mechanism of active absorption of glucose is explained by sodium co-transport theory. It is also called as secondary transport of glucose as energy required for glucose transport is provided by active transport of sodium. Active absorption of glucose is facilitated by presence of sodium ions. The carrier translocases, this is a carrier translocases present on the plasma membrane of enterocytes has two binding sites, one for glucose and other for sodium. So this is the binding site for glucose and this one is the binding site for sodium. The carrier molecule binds to glucose and sodium simultaneously. This is a glucose molecule and this is the sodium. It binds to the carrier molecule simultaneously. Such transport system that transports two different kinds of molecules simultaneously is called as symport. The complex that is carrier translocases along with glucose and sodium enters enterocytes where glucose and sodium are released. However, sodium ions are actively transported out of the cell into blood capillary immediately so as to maintain the concentration gradient. So here you can see the active transport of sodium. The carrier system in which molecules are transferred in same direction it is called as symport. Whereas if molecules are carried in different direction it is called as antiport. Lastly, endocytosis. In this process, large size solid or liquid macronutrients are carried by vesicles across the plasma membrane. For example, leukocytes present in the intestinal mucosa pass through intestinal wall and engulf the food particles. When loaded with food, they carry them back into blood and lymph. So, this is all about today's topic about absorption. I hope you have liked the video. Thanks for watching and have a great day ahead.